Hi, I'm Mac Spainhammer. And I'm Troy McCormick. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. Welcome to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. I'm Troy McCormick and we're in Delaware County today at the AMA National Headquarters. That's the Academy of Model Aeronautics and we're here to watch the model plane competition. Now, this, is a, this is a national competition. We've got people from all over the country and a few from international locations. We're going to be looking at control line flying. We're going to look at pylon racing. Okay, well, and he, right back behind yeah, us we've got the dogfight competitions. So we've got a lot of exciting things to watch today and we're going to cut away now and go pick up on some of those races right now. Alright, well this is uh, Control Line Precision Aerobatic and what we have here are the national championships. Uh, these are people coming from all over the United States and they're competing with planes that they've built themselves and they fly a specific pattern that we call a, a stunt pattern or a precision aerobatic pattern that's uh, made up of 15 maneuvers that they fly in a period of about eight minutes. Uh, those maneuvers are judged by a couple of judges, two to three judges who um, to uh, identify the maneuvers themselves and try to uh, judge them uh, each maneuver as they occur based on a scale of one or say zero to 40 points. And then those add together to make an overall flight pattern. Um, so it is, it, is, it, is it a scripted uh, flight that they're performing or is it just they have to get all those different uh, patterns in? Uh, it is a scripted pattern. It's uh, a sequence of maneuvers that have been flown since about 19... Uh, Oh, 59, something like that, 1960, where they were flying these maneuvers. And they've done the same set of maneuvers ever since then. Okay. And the control line, can you just explain how that functions? Well, a control line model has uh, two lines. Uh, it actually operates a mechanical device in the plane that's a, basically a push rod that uh, controls the uh, flight of the, the plane in a hemisphere of, out from the pilot. They have to maintain a consistent distance based on the length of their lines. If they don't have tension, they don't have control over the plane. Okay. And, and is there a time limit to fly those patterns? Uh, eight minutes is the, the length of time, from the time they signal a judge until their plane stops. Now, in general, most of these planes will fly in less than seven minutes by that same sequence of maneuvers. And is that gauged at all by the amount of fuel they put in? or Completely. I mean, there, there's no shutoffs. There's nothing uh, fancy. There's no radio. It's all directly connected to the plane. In fact, that's probably one of the uh, the things that have led me to be interested in this sport ever since I was a you know a teenager and flying this myself um, is that idea of being directly connected to the plane. You're, you're actually flying something in very variable conditions. Every flight's unique, everything's different. It becomes very much an art form. And, and you can't in the middle just decide you want to land the plane. No, there's no way to do that. You have to just go until it runs out of fuel. Right, and if something happens during the flight, you got to be able to handle whatever happens to the plane. The engine shuts off, something else happens to it. Come too low to the ground, hit a prop, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen. While you you're might be there. done. Yeah, you'd be done. Okay. And are these all local people that are here competing today? Oh, this is uh, people from all over the United States. Uh, the person flying behind you is from Washington. and. Uh, People are here from uh, everywhere from New Jersey to Florida to Texas to California, everywhere, every kind of state just about is represented in some way. I've flown RC and I've flown uh, gliders too, but uh, there's just uh, a fixation I've had with this since I was a little kid and uh, it's done real well for me and I've put a lot of my life in it. And I understand you've won a tournament or two. Yes, I have. I've managed to win three world championships and quite a number of nationals and uh, 
nine major uh, Tucson championships, which are the older versions of these. These are the oldest stunt planes. Where are some of the other places that you've competed? Well, I've been to Europe 17 times and uh, all over the United States. Uh, wherever there's a big meet, I try to try to be, you know. The AMA has a nice facility here. What do you think about it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. They, uh, they've done themselves proud with this. Tell me about your plane. That airplane I'm flying now is a P-47 Thunderbolt, and it's modeled after a World War II fighter. Uh, it's not exactly scale. It's changed to be a stunt plane, but I've built uh, four of those, and uh, they've served me real well. I'm Ron Morgan. I'm from Scotland, Pennsylvania. I volunteer here at the National Model Airplane site, uh, acting as a contest director for the National Model Airplane Championships. So that, that's a big position for this event. You're kind of the, yeah. the top dog over all of this? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> so if it goes wrong, if something goes wrong, they can find yeah, you? I'm the guy that stops that, yep. <laughs> Buck, Buck stops here. Ron, tell me about uh, your work with the, the AMA and the Nationals uh, over the years. How have you been involved in just a little bit about the history of the Nats? Uh, I started working in 1960 uh, went to the, when the Navy was sponsoring the event. And, Went there just as a spectator and uh, got snookered into doing some work and it's just snowball after that and I've been doing it ever since. Now before the AMA had their uh, national headquarters here in Muncie, uh, I understand you had a building in, in Washington, and, but where did you fly your uh, control lines and, and uh, RC contests? We didn't have a site to do that back then. We. Uh, Started off in downtown Washington on Vermont Avenue, and we were there for a number of years. And then we built a facility out in uh, Reston, Virginia, and uh, that we were out there for oh, eight, ten years. And then uh, the thinking got that we really need to have a national flying site. Uh, the EAA, to some degree, uh, uh, had an influence on that, and uh, the sites out here became available, and uh, so they bought them. And they since sold everything they had in Washington, and this is the whole operation out here now. So this is their national headquarters, and since we're flying the nationals today, uh, tell me just a little bit about the variety of things that are going on as part of the nationals, and if somebody came out, what are the, the various types of uh, competitions they could see? Well, this event lasts about uh, six weeks all total, and it started a week ago with what we call scale aerobatics. These are air, much like you see on the, uh, the TV shows flying full-time uh, or full-size airplanes, and they uh, uh, emulate those particular models. This past weekend, we had what we call scale airplanes, which are replicas of real airplanes. And uh, we flew those Saturday and Sunday. And now today, we're starting pylon racing. And we're flying radio control combat. And we're flying a whole lot of control line events. Uh, we fly aerobatics on control line. We fly speed on control line. We do racing. And we have combat on control line as well. So that's all going on this week and that will last until next uh, Saturday. And what kind of a, uh, an area do you draw from you know, your, your contestants? We draw from everywhere. We've got people here from Australia. Uh, it's, that's not the norm, but I mean, we do get foreign contestants quite often. Canada has a big influence. Uh, we draw from all over the entire United States. Okay. Uh, and, and how many people will, will participate in six-week competitions? <clears throat> They're probably somewhere close to 1,000. Uh, over the over the, the period of time, and uh, uh, the soaring and the free flight are the two largest events we have. But this has the most activity right now because there's so many things going on. Lost River Jet Boat Excursions, offering exciting and enjoyable boating adventures on the forks of the White River. Climb aboard the Lost River Jet Boat and fly up the river, stopping to enjoy wildlife and scenic Indiana. We launch near McCormick's Creek and Spring Mill State Parks. French Lick, and Potoka Lake. For more information or to book your trip today, call 888-733-6883 or visit us online at www.lostriversllc.com. High Tech Firearms and Training is your southern Indiana source for all of your hunting and shooting supplies and firearms. We have a fully stocked selection 
of handguns, rifles, shotguns, knives, ammunition, bows, and archery supplies. Firearm training and personal protection classes are offered by NRA certified instructors in our in-house training center. Remember, shoot often and carry safely. High-Tech Firearms and Training is conveniently located in Sellersburg, Indiana.